Hi, I'm Heather from Heo Booktubes and today's problematic authors I won't support. And what I mean by that is I won't promote. And so these are authors that I will not recommend on my channel. And the reasons why this is going to be a fairly lengthy list and I have quite a few caveats. So here we go. First one is I'm going to take a page out of Ashley at Bookish Realm video. She will be linked in the description and if I can find the video that I'm thinking of it will be linked in the description and that is these are books that you won't see on Kia booktubes, on HEA booktubes. You won't see them on my channel. That does not mean that I am not friends with people who read these authors. It doesn't mean that you have to not read these authors. It is a very personal choice for me. These are the books that I am not promoting because of stuff that the authors have done. You know, I can't tell you what to read and I can't tell you what to promote and I'm not trying to. I make decisions for myself. I also do, you know, decide what creators I want to support kind of based on their patterns and things like that. But I'm not trying to tell you that anyone who promotes these authors is a terrible person. As you will see, some of these authors that I won't read and promote on my channel are loved by some of my dearest friends on booktube. So this is not the end all be all, these are terrible people, if you support them you're a terrible person list. Some of this is true, <laughs> but some of it is not. So you know, this is just a very personal list to me and this channel currently. That's that. I'm not trying to tell you what you should do. Also, all of these are romance only. This is just romance authors, adult romance authors. That's all that's on this list. Also, truthfully, not every single one of these authors is a deal breaker. Some it's possible that I would promote or I do promote different series by them. And so this is just where I'm at with my head. It's not a hundred percent infallible right and wrong list. Also, all of these are white authors. I'm not going to be telling you any BIPOC authors that I think that you should avoid because of their problematic behavior. One, BIPOC authors, especially women of color, get held to an unachievable higher standard and canceled over small transgressions. And when I say canceled, I mean actually do have their careers ended and their white counterparts go on to thrive. So I'm just not participating <laughs> in that. I'm not adding to that. So if you want a list or if you want to know what BIPOC authors maybe you have some problematic behavior or some problematic representation in their books, you need to be following BIPOC creators and reviewers who talk about those things. I really feel like that is the source to get that information. There are definitely authors that I avoid because of what my friends and the people that I follow have said about them and have said about the representation, but they are on this list and you're not going to get them on this channel because you really should be following BIPOC creators who call out these things. And if you're not, then I'm not sure that you're the one that should have the information in the first place. And also you're not going to get it from me. So <laughs> that disclaimer, if I got any of these wrong and any of these are BIPOC authors, that I assumed were white, then I apologize. Okay, let's start off with someone that I love to hate <laughs> because this entire thing was so shady. It was so shady. Okay, so Isabella Starling, I read this Christmas book in December 2020. It was bad. Um, I gave it a two star rating and you know, what about my merry way? Well, <laughs> Number one, she has like six plus pen names. So know that. And then also February 1st of 2021, she decided to publish a black love book. Now for those of you who are not making the connection, February 1st, 2021 is the first day of Black History Month here in the United States following the summer of 2020. Uh, so that's, that's, that's something. And she published it under a new pen name and that pen name did not have an author picture. It just had, you know, a graphic of the pen name and yeah, here's this black love book on February 1st. Not only is it a black love book by a white author, 
but it is a book where the main character explores his blackness and his struggle with the internalized anti-blackness and accepting the color of his skin. Now, I don't know if you are not on board yet, but that is not something that a white author should be exploring under a new pen name, pretending to be a black author. And if you want to say that she was not pretending to be a black author, I do not believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. I absolutely think that she intended for this to be read as a black love book by a black author and to get that specific hype train on the first day of Black History Month 2021. I absolutely believe that that is her intention. Obviously that's something that we just have to decide for ourselves but that is what I believe to my core. Then she gets called out for it. She gets called out for it. So then she goes in her Facebook group, which Facebook groups are kind of a little bit infamous in the book community for being where all of the problematic middle-aged white Karen Trumpers thrive. <laughs> And she is talking about how I will never write outside my race again. These people are so ungrateful. I should have listened to the people who told me not to write non-white characters. They should be happy for the representation. But no, now they just want to cancel me. Can white authors not write BIPOC characters? I just like this full on tangent and you know saying thank you to everyone and yes I will never do this I should have listened oh it's a mistake don't write outside your race um if 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 <laughs> if all of the prior stuff didn't indicate that she was maybe not the person to write this book her response more than did it more than did it and on top of that I have heard, now I don't know for sure that this is 100% true, but I have heard that she had this book ready to go with white characters and then saw the cover. I was like, oh, I want to use that cover. Let me switch my characters to black characters. I, I cannot stand her. Oh, I hope she never has a moment's peace. Next, I have Jamie McGuire, which I was not going to include on this list because I kind of view her as super well known for being racist, like incredibly racist. However, I decided to include her for a couple of reasons. Number one, I did have her on my TBR, not being in the book community at all, not having any idea who she was or any of the things about her. But I just saw her book, Beautiful Disaster, on list on Goodreads. And so I wanted to read it because it was like on alpha list and all sorts of stuff, right? I never did read it because it was never available at the library. It was always checked out. So dodged a bullet there. Jay McGuire is <laughs> possibly one of the most blatantly racist and prejudiced authors that we know of. She on Twitter has openly supported the Proud Boys, has openly supported J.K. Rowling, and has openly supported Kyle Rittenhouse, which if you don't, if you don't see the problem, just, just leave my channel now. I, this is not the place for you. I, it's, it's so, so bad. Guess who's getting a movie? Yep, yep. So I'm sure you're about to see it everywhere. So I want to let you know no, <laughs> it's a hard pass. If you're going to pass one person on this list, don't support her. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't watch the movie. Don't buy the book. Don't read the book. Don't talk about her. An awful human being. An awful human being. Next, I have Tessa Bailey, which she had the controversy about her cover and stuff. Okay, you know, I'm not great, but not not enough to make me completely skip her, right? Where I took issue with it was her response to the cover stuff. There were several BIPOC authors and creators, several of them my friends, calling her out, asking for her to change, and she just kind of pretended like they weren't speaking. And she did change the cover and she did change the second cover, 
but she never actually responded to the criticism or to the people who were calling her out or to the BIPOC community in general. She never did anything to indicate that she heard them other than just quietly changing the covers, right? And I just don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that response. I don't think that you should be pretending like the criticism doesn't exist. I don't think you should be blocking or deleting comments or any of the things. I just found that I could not, could not support. There are plenty of things in her books that I think people could take issue with, but this was the specific thing that made me think, eh, I'm just, I'm not going to read or promote her anymore. And I was really sad because I really wanted to read that book. I was really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, I value the people <laughs> that I've met more than a specific book. I don't know, like that's, you're choosing between people in a book and you should choose people. Then we have JT Geisinger, who is someone that I have actively promoted as well as Tessa Bailey. Both of these have been repeated recommendations in my videos. JT Geisinger, had some racist stereotypes and when you you know stack all the books together there's more and more red flags and people were pointing it out and I was like okay <laughs> won't promote her anymore I think it really comes down to who you believe right and I follow people that I really respect and when they say hey this is a problem and more than one of them says this is a problem and they give reasons why this is a problem, I believe them. And it's really just as simple as that. I take it off my TBR, I take it out of my recommendations. Now, all of these, you will notice, I don't go back and edit old videos or change old videos or delete old videos or change my old reviews or ratings or any of the things. I just stop promoting and reading in the future. That's kind of the route that I take. Then we have Serena Ackeroyd, who I read one of her mafia books and I was like, yeah, you know, you know. Um, so recently after all of this stuff with quite a few TikTok authors getting in trouble for their content, she posted in this author group and said, you know, does anyone have a master list of things to avoid so we don't get canceled? It includes things like master bedroom and chocolate colored eyes. And first of all, I don't know why you need, feel the need to be snarky about things that do happen in racial situations. Like is chocolate colored eyes the end all be all offense? No, of course it's not, but, but can it play into fetishization of BIPOC people, specifically black and brown women and femmes? Yes, yes it can. And so can all the other descriptors for their skin tone, etc. So like, there's a reason why it's not the greatest and it's not because you called someone's eyes chocolate. That's not the end all be all. So that just indicates to me that you are not in a place where you have confronted your own internalized racism and you don't need my support or money or platform. That's all, that's all, you know? You can grow, but you're just not gonna grow with my readership. <laughs> then we have Kate Stewart. Kate Stewart who got in hot water recently because people pointed out that she had an actual slur in her book Drive. This is the author of That Guy on the Right and Exodus. So a very popular author. Turns out that there's some things in Guy on the Right or Guy on the Left or Guy in the Middle. One of those that are pretty pretty bad. Not only is she not sorry, but her, her Mexican-American best friend jumped in and supported her in a wild way that really explains why they're friends. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But she just got, you know, a big traditional publishing deal and I did not like the only book of hers that I read and um, I just don't understand why racism isn't a deal breaker for more of you. To be honest, I don't understand why you would waste your time and energy defending it if you're not racist. Then we have Mega March, another racist. <laughs> another racist. I have heard firsthand accounts about her interactions with BIPOC readers and reviewers at events. Yeah, I think if you go back two years, I mentioned one of her books in one of my videos. 
it'll never happen again. LJ Shen, she bullies reviewers, readers, and other authors, makes uh, puppet accounts to do so, is not a good person. Again, read one of her books, wrote it in a couple of videos, will not do it anymore. Tate James <laughs> decided to send her followers after a reviewer on TikTok who did not like her book. This is a series that I read and promoted and won't promote anymore. Authors should not be harassing reviewers. Like, it's not a hard thing to avoid. Don't do it. I think that TikTok really is going to have a reckoning of authors and reader spaces because it is so interconnected right now. And it really is, you know, you have to regulate your own behavior. But authors, there's just, there's lines you shouldn't cross. And if you cross them, I'm not going to support you. And we have Willa Winters who um, said a lot of awful things and basically said that you can't believe a man about being a victim of abuse because you need to be believing woman and just said a lot of awful things and won't be on this channel. Then you have TJ Klune. This is an author who I'm gonna be honest with you, this could very much be my own perspective as a white woman. I don't think he did anything wrong. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think that he used a tool of organization in his books to indicate <laughs> how bad the systems are in colonization. Does it play into the white savior trope? Absolutely. But I read The House on the Cerulean Sea and really, really loved it. I thought it had a lot to say about prejudice and about our own participation in systems that are not great. That was really good. However, obviously when some of the first mass graves of children at residential schools were found, People mentioned how his book was inspired by that and he didn't say anything now. He was having really bad mental health. He has been open about suicidal ideation, all sorts of things. So I don't blame him for not responding in that moment. He said he wasn't online and I believe him. I don't think that we should question these things. However, at no point did he address it, even when things were better and when he, you know, was going on to promote other books. He never addressed it. And again, I don't think that he really did anything wrong using it in his book. It's not about Indigenous children. It was just kind of inspired by that. And again, it's a tool of colonization that has been used in many different countries and time periods. But then you had some readers attacking Indigenous creators for criticizing his books. And I'm sorry, but if you read the book, the last thing that you should have gotten from it is, oh, let me attack Indigenous creators for taking issue. Uh, it is, again, one of those things where I would rather be kind than be right. And so even though I personally did not take issue with it, and again, that could just be me from my place of privilege just that's the way I see it. That doesn't have to mean that I go around being like, well, actually, no, I'm not gonna promote the book. I'm not gonna promote the author because I care about the indigenous creators that I follow. I care about them. I care more about them than I care about that book. It's just the choice that I make. And I just, I would really encourage you, sometimes you can just not promote things because you care about other people. Next, we have Mariana Zapata. And this one, again, I'm pretty torn on because uh, Mariana Zapata has some depictions in her books about being racist against like Filipino, not just their foods, but also the way that they looked. And it's written as this is kind of a, a racist microaggression, right? And not to <laughs> drag her into it and be like, well, my Filipino friend, <laughs> But Brienne Lovenwords loves Mariana Zapata and she is the exact representation that is being questioned in this book and she felt really seen by this scene. And I talked to her about it. I was like, hey, what is your take on this? I know how much you love her. I know that you are <laughs> this literal 
embodiment of this representation how do you feel about it and so we talked about it and I really appreciated all of the things that she went into with me and she talked about how of course if someone else is bothered by it that's so valid but for me I really did feel seen by this this is stuff that has happened to me it is racist but it also happens to me regularly and I was glad to read it so you know is it the author being racist or is it the author writing a character being racist I lean on it was the author writing and character being racist. However, where I take issue with this is she then blocked re reviewers who were calling her out and deleted comments calling her out. And I don't like that. I don't like that. So I just have decided not to read her. I don't already read her. I don't already love her. So it's an easy pass because it's not something I already love. So, you know, I don't take issue with the people who do promote her especially you know Brie <laughs> I think that she has every right to promote her but uh I just figured eh, I'll just I'll just skip I just won't start then I have Kristen Granada who <laughs> plagiarized her entire book and the reason why I mentioned this is because that book was on my TBR until I learned that it was plagiarized that I was like uh no literally plagiarized the whole thing the whole thing so speaking of plagiarizing we have Dana Isley who I did promote I read and loved two of her books I actually read like three or four but I only loved two of them and it was <laughs> interesting things I didn't actually love everything about how she was called out I think some of it was a little bit um I don't know I just didn't like everything about it to be honest but basically she was plagiarizing stuff from a patreon and it's one of those things where legally she didn't plagiarize because it's not word for word but so many similarities happening one after the other I feel like another creator has the right to call that out even though legally it's okay but when you have I publish this, you publish this. I publish this, you publish this. Um, that's that's weird. And honestly, if you're doing that with videos or content or whatever, and you're not acknowledging where you got that inspiration from, and you just keep copying another creator, I I think that's wrong. <laughs> so I don't read or support her anymore. And I have Christy Cunning, which this one is I have mixed feelings on. Christy Cunning, I will still promote her four psychos books. She also has the pen name ST Abbey. She wrote The Risk, the Mindfuck series. And she's also the pen name for CM Owens, which is her motorcycle club pen name. Now, she tragically passed away last year. So, you know, I'm not trying to hold an author who's not here accountable. And I'm not trying to create any problems for her family or any of the things, right? So, I don't know. Like, I feel like that plays a part into it, right? She's no longer here. However, I read and loved this series before realizing that that is a slur and should not be used. I think part of it is simply we don't have a lot of Romani people in the United States. And so sometimes we're not as aware of their racial issues as we are for maybe some of the things that are larger communities in the US. And also it is my opinion. <laughs> That if you listen to the Europeans talking about how, oh, we're not racist, they are extremely racist against the Romani still to awful degrees, to points that just are not even happening in the United States. And the United States has a lot of, pro has a lot of racial problems. But I think that they are violently racist against the Romani. So for a white author to just be like, oh, well, some people don't mind the name or some people do, but you know, we're immortal paranormals and that is our identity. It wasn't in any way, I don't think it was connected to the Romani people in the books, but it's just, that's not your word to decide to use and to decide that, oh, well, some people are bothered by it, but not us. I just really feel like that was, not a good choice and it was really sad to me because I loved this series the twists the turns the reveals it was so good and actually Izzy at happy for now was like hey it's a slur and you know I was like oh okay let me google it oh yeah it is
guess I can't promote that. I mean, I just, again, like, no one's asking you to be infallible or to never make a mistake. But when you learn that something is causing harm to other people, I really feel like you should stop doing it. I think that probably we shouldn't promote any of the pen names, but I I do. I just don't promote this series and I don't know what I'll do with that in the future. But just, you know, I wouldn't be promoting the series or anything that uses that word. Then we have Katie Robichox, another author that I read and loved a couple of their books and promoted bull bullied, bullied reviewers on TikTok. So bye. Daniel Laurie, racist, said that she had a lot of problems with BLM and the riots, but hey, she has a black friend, so she can't be racist. So that's a no. That's a no. That's a pass. Goodbye. No. And they're so popular. I'm never gonna read her. Took off from my TBR. Cora Riley. <laughs> Cora Riley wrote a wheelchair user and she was talking a lot about how her mafia society was so prejudiced so of course she could use all these things. Like they do view her as a burden. They just said all sorts of things about their character in literally just the synopsis that were like slurs and language that's not supposed to be used and all of that and then on top of that their reaction was to throw a fit and talk about how they were crying and talk about how they're sorry to all the readers that were looking forward to it but not not apologizing to anybody that was calling them out and quite frankly just cemented for me the fact that they were not the person to be writing this book i think if you can't take any valid criticism about your representation and that just proves that you were not the one to write the representation. I think that there are a lot of authors who get criticized for the representation and fix it. They take the book down, they edit it, they put it back up, they thank the people who corrected them. No one is asking you to be infallible but when you get feedback that this is a problem your reaction to that matters and I feel like hers was terrible and I won't be promoting her. Again, I w read one book a while ago. It's in a couple videos. It won't be anymore. Then we have Scarlett St. Clair. This is the author I had in my TBR and took off when I found out that she's just a terrible person who's like mean to people all the time. Authors, reviewers, readers, just some truly unhinged bully behavior and I'm not gonna support it. Then we have Elle Kalanidi, who I'm not really interested in reading, but I was interested in reading her pen name, Erin Watt, which is Paper Princess. She's racist and she will write MM, but not sapphic. And I just feel like, you know, that's okay. If you don't want to write a sapphic book, that's okay. But then you shouldn't be writing an MM book either. Just stick to the streets. It's okay. It's okay. But, um, don't fetishize gay men when you won't write other queer identities. I just, I have a problem with that. Then we had Penny Reed, and this is mainly because of Izzy talking about it, but um, she kind of promotes some Nazi behavior <laughs> in her books and also had some not great interactions with readers. Uh, again, I read one book, whatever, I don't promote her. Lastly, someone who I will not read or promote is Julia Quinn. This is the author of the Bridgerton series. Are we surprised that this is what blew up? No, we're not. One, I definitely take an issue with acting like women can't sexually assault men and it's okay when they do. I know. <laughs> and then also she publicly said about how she doesn't write BIPOC characters in her historical romances because they wouldn't get a happy ending. They would have to deal with so much racism. And supposedly she has maybe done some work since then. But quite honestly, if your mistake was public, your apology and your reparations and your growth should also be public. And that has not been the case. And it's just not someone I'm interested in promoting. And so I don't. I don't watch the show. I don't read the books. I watched one episode. 
whatever. <laughs> no, I don't really watch romances as much as I read them. But yeah, I just... She certainly is getting enough support without me jumping on the bad bandwagon. So that's it. That's, I'm sure I miss some people, but these are her authors that I either had on my TBR or have heard everywhere or have read and promoted that I no longer will. So again, this is a very personal list to Heather on Hea Booktubes, what shows up on my channel and why. And, you know, if you don't agree, that's fine. But if you weren't aware of these things, hopefully you know a little bit more. So, yeah. I do really recommend, one, following by Pop creators and reviewers. Two, I follow Izzy at Happy For Now. I watch all of her Romance Landia videos to find out kind of problematic behavior by authors or publishers or what have you. And also, if you are interested in books that are not romance specific, Jess Owens covers a lot of things in publishing and author spaces. There's a lot of authors that I know are problematic that are not romance specific. So, so thanks so much for watching. Bye!